you know, grace is the ability to have compassion, receptivity of ourself so much that clarity comes, that self-love is just kind of inevitable, that we feel more grounded and present and ready for what's to come, no matter what is on the other side of the door. Hello and welcome to the Her Ascension Story podcast, where you get to hear the behind the scenes of inspiring life stories to help normalize the reality of the full human experience. I'm your host, Sarah Tillamont, and it's an honor to hold this space with each guest and with you. For more, follow the show on your favorite platforms and at Her Ascension Story on Instagram. And of course, feel free to share with your friends and your family to start your own soul chats like this. Hello, everyone. Welcome to a different kind of episode. So usually this podcast is about having other people come on, sharing stories, sharing our triumphs and our challenges and everything that really equals a spiritual or really just a soul level experience that we have through life, right? But today is going to be just be chatting with you. I have been getting nudges from my husband, from my friends, from spirit, my higher self, everybody to start recording episodes with just me talking and sharing these bits and pieces that I share with my clients and my work. If you don't know my work already, then what I pretty much do is integrative therapy and somatic spiritual mentorship with women around the world. And A lot of that obviously has to do with our healing processes um, in a variety of different ways. I really focus on um, a sexual and a spiritual healing with women, but of course, everything comes into play, right? So while it might be sexual, while it might look spiritual, a lot of it is still focusing on the physical, the mental, emotional, energetic, all of it right? So that's where I really love to work. And so because of that, I have a variety of different backgrounds and a variety of different knowledges and wisdom and personal gnosis, right? Like this personal lived experience um, that I share from, which that's what this whole podcast is about. So with all of that, today's episode is going to be just a nice little chat about grace. Because while working on my own recovering perfectionism, while working through my PTSD recovery that I have been working on since 2015, I would say. And that's really when my spiritual journey really got um, awakened, you can say, but it really just deepened. Um, and then also with the last two years of experiencing severe burnout, which I know that since the pandemic, since lockdown, I am not the only one that has been experiencing burnout as we try to figure out a new way of living life, right? I mean, we have so many different realizations that have come online for us, so many different things about what we want to be doing, what we don't want to be doing. Maybe we don't know anything, but we know we don't want this anymore, right? And so we're trying all of these different things. And so many more of us are called to either spiritual or healing or both journeys. And it's not necessarily about fixing ourselves, right? It's about experiencing ourselves, and experiencing ourselves in a real way, right? So it's kind of like releasing that perfectionism and we just want it to be real anymore, or at least I do. And so I know that I'm not the only one. So if you are somebody who tries to be the best that they can be or is trying to figure out life, like, I mean, who isn't, right? Like that's the quintessential existential crisis that we all go through, right? But you know, with all of it, no matter what you're going through, there's always a beautiful reminder of grace. And one of the things that I work with 
in my client work is trying to help women have more grace with themselves. And grace can look like so many different things. It can look like taking a moment for self-care. And maybe that self-care looks so stereotypical, like going and getting your nails done or a facial or a massage. Or maybe that self-care is establishing boundaries. Or maybe that self-care is just saying, I'm not going out tonight because I don't have the bandwidth and honoring honoring that energy level within yourself, right? Um, there's so many different ways that grace can appear in our lives. And I think that what I really want to do by starting this out is reading this poem or this, I guess it would be a poem by Daniel Doby. I actually have this framed um, above my desk. And so if you just want to, if you're driving, please obviously keep your eyes open, drive safely, please. <laughs> but if you can, if you're in a space where it's possible, maybe just close your eyes and just let this kind of sink in and see how it feels to you with this reminder of grace and the challenge of allowing grace to permeate. Oops, sorry about that. Of allowing grace to permeate into all aspects of life in the mundane and in the monumental. So here it is. It's called Two Feet In. This year, I choose to burn my good candles on a Tuesday at noon just because. I choose to use the expensive lotion, the one I keep tucked safe up on the counter, not ration any of my most cherished belongings, because I am worthy of investing in right now. This year, I choose to wear that thing. You know the one I told myself I would slip on when I looked a certain way. I choose to love my body, this vessel I have been given, and her seasons as they shift. This year, I give myself permission to change and keep changing, for I understand there is an underlying truth when it comes to becoming. It doesn't have to mirror anyone else. This year, I choose to let go, really let go of the heavy, of the half-hearted, no more forcing connection where it no longer lives. I choose to nourish what is willing to grow. This year, I choose to be grateful for the teachings of my yesterday. I honor my wholeness when I honor my whole story, even the shaky parts. This year, I choose to step forward, clear eyes, heart open, two feet grounded, palms wide, the all is possible, unknown and new. I get goosebumps when I read that because it's just like, we could come at it from so many different angles. And one of the things that I do with clients and also when I, uh, I used to teach Reiki and one of the very first things, whether it was my Reiki one or my Reiki you know, master teacher level class, whatever certification you were getting with me, what we would have done at the very beginning of class was read um, a poem and see which parts of our energy, of our soul, of our body, of our mind, of our emotions, which part was really resonating with us. And so even just thinking like, which part felt really good in that for you? And does grace have some sort of part in allowing that in your life. And, you know, just going on this basis of this grace, you know, what I really like to imagine is that in life, you know, whether it's, you know, wanting a new job or wanting to live somewhere differently or, wanting to deepen the vulnerability that we need in healthy relationships to really prosper and thrive, or whether it's facing, you know, this deep shadow work or this trauma healing or insert anything, right? What it seems like, what it often feels like is that we're at this door and we know that walking through that door is that transition, that in between of where we are now and where we want to be. And like just a little side note here, part of grace is releasing that pressure and that, you know, trying to figure out what is right, what is wrong, what do I need to do? Uh, 
et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know, all of the things that rush through our mind when we are faced with these doors in life. And those doors have always been there. We have just been walking consistently and stumbling upon them and, you know, sometimes creating them for ourselves. Sometimes they're destined, sometimes they're fated and there is a difference. You know, fate is often like a cause and effect, right? It's just like if we're on autopilot and destiny is like this calling, where are we really feeling called to go? But that's a whole other topic. (laughs) But what I really want to talk about now is like when we're at this door, there are so many different ways that we can go through it. And I can use this metaphor for so many different things like okay, you know, there's one method that you can do to just like allow the door to dissolve or allow the door to open itself or, you know, allow a higher being to turn the knob for you or whatever. But for this, we're going to deal with keys. And this metaphor is also something that is very, very common when I am channeling messages uh, for clients because that is a part of my work too. I started doing um, professional intuitive readings in Sedona, Arizona back in 2016. And it's just kind of carried with me no matter what I'm doing. Sometimes I'm on a client call and I'll just start shuffling cards, you know, asking like, do you want a message right now? And they're like, yes, please. And a lot of these times or when I'm doing readings or anything like that, clients always using these keys, um, the key analogy. And so What if grace is like a universal key, right? You know, we're in front of this door and we have to try all of the different keys that we have, or we have to go find keys, which seems like we're taking detours because we're like, I just want to get through this door. Why do I have to go over here? Or why do I have to go what seems like to a whole other country to find this key, right? And those keys are sometimes, you know, a connection, like a network, if it's for a business or for work, sometimes that key is a practice, you know, like a, like a meditation or a healing modality or something, you know, sometimes this key is going to therapy or having a hard conversation, whatever it may be, right? We have to try all of these keys, all of these tools also that we have in our toolbox, that can help us. And it's like, sometimes we just like frantically start pulling out our key ring and trying all these different keys to see if it will fit in this one door. And I feel like there's so often, so many different times when there are multiple keys that are needed, you know, like picture, I don't even know, Fort Knox. (laughs) Sometimes the next part of life or that movement that we want to take forward, it feels like we have to go through Fort Knox to get there. And sometimes there are, you know, multiple keys that are needed. And I feel like when we get to the point of trying all these different keys, maybe we found a couple that work. But no matter what, whether their keys are working, whether we haven't found them yet, whatever. One key that always seems to work, seems to make the situation better at least, seems to feel like it has opened enough of that lock that we can fit other keys into it maybe even. Maybe it's like the grease or the WD-40 that we spray on the lock first to make things go smoother and easier. And so that key can really get in there. I feel like that key is grace. And I'm not talking about like, maybe, maybe a divine grace, but not like this, this, you know, intervention that we often see, you know, in religion, When I'm talking about grace, what I'm really talking about is that ability to slow down, appreciate, use the good lotion because you deserve it. You know, remember that your path doesn't have to mirror anybody else. Remember that your whole story is worthy of being not only validated, but accepted. 
by you, even the shaky parts. You know, grace is the ability to have compassion, receptivity of ourself so much that clarity comes, that self-love is just kind of inevitable, that we feel more grounded and present and ready for what's to come, no matter what is on the other side of the door, no matter if we don't know if the next key will actually work, no matter if we don't know when that door will open. And the thing about grace is that it comes in so many different forms externally, but it never really lands home until we give it to ourselves. And so I know you might be thinking, okay, this is all fine and great, but how do I actually give grace to myself? And that's going to be unique to each and every one of us. It's going to depend on our life experiences, the traumas that we've gone through, the stresses that we currently have, the anxieties that we currently have, the state of our mental health, the state of our physical health, the the goals or ambitions or aspirations or desires that we currently have. It depends on our self-talk. It depends on how comfortable we feel leaning into the uncomfortable. It's so unique to all of us. And so while there might not be an answer that I can give you, a one and done, there are so many different ways that you can try to experience more grace. And something that I even did this morning when I got out of bed, or even before I got out of bed, my mind just automatically started racing with all of these things that I have to prepare for or get done or anything like that. And of course, when you think about that stuff, then you're like, well, holy shit, now I have, now I have to worry about this and this and this. And it's like, just slow down. And so I just put my hand on my head, my other hand on my womb space, because, you know, I just feel very connected to that space and it's just it's a very grounding practice for me. And putting our hands on our body makes our mental reality feel more physical, feel more real, right? Like we feel like, okay, no, I'm actually alive. This is real life. I am actually here. It's not like I'm not just my thoughts. I'm not just going on in my head. Like I, I'm here, right? And so I just put my hands on my body and I was like, allowing this natural love or permission or ease you know there's so many different labels that I could put on it but I just allowed that to just seep from my heart down my arms through my hands and into you know my head and my womb space and be like right now all that matters is ease just in this moment, because I know that if I allow ease to come in, ease of, okay, I'm allowed to be stressed. I'm allowed to have these worries or to feel overwhelmed or anything like that. You know, just that permission of I'm allowed to feel like this, that's grace in itself, right? But going even deeper, I was like, I'm allowed to feel all of that, but I'm allowed to just be in this moment and breathe. And once I just started doing that, like I allowed that energy that was radiating from my hands to kind of just like soak into those thoughts and literally soak into my actual brain and just try to like relax it a little bit. And that might not make sense to you, but I have brain damage and the best way that I can describe it when I have adrenaline or cortisol like running on high or anything is that I feel like my brain is like turning into knots. And so I just like have this visual practice of seeing that energy go in and just soothing those knots and untangling them. And that can be like a good practice even 
if your heart feels overwhelmed or your stomach, right? Like I have knots in my stomach or butterflies or whatever. Just seeing this natural healing or loving energy radiating from your hands and kind of soothing all of that. But once I got in that space of I'm allowed to feel ease, then just this wash of relief came over me. And I was like, I can do it no matter what. I know that spirit has my back on this. I know that this is something I'm guided to. All of these different things, right? We just have to have this key of grace, whatever that may look like, in order to actually have that clarity or that reminder of self-love or and when I say self-love, I mean holding ourselves even in that hard that hard spaces, you know. And really what it comes down to is this sort of interaction with a deeper part of us, right? Whether it's an inner child or a previous version of us, or maybe even a past life version of us, or a voice from an ancestor that just like lives rent free in our head, you know, remember our parents, our ancestors too. And maybe it's just allowing grace to come to that space where we can feel enough clarity and enough calmness to say, you know what? You don't need more pressure to be better, to do more, to figure things out faster or anything like that. What you need is grace. And we're going to do this together. We're going to figure this out and we've got it. And ultimately, that's an embodiment practice, right? Not the practice of doing that, but practicing it, practicing being embodied. The embodiment is the ability to, in this regard, the embodiment is the ability to see my mind is acting like this, my body is feeling like this, and then here's me witnessing all of it. I'm going to bring it all together. And with the mind comes all of those different versions of us. And with the body comes ancestral stuff and our own stuff. And uh, I could keep going on forever, but I will not. <laughs> I promised myself that these would be shorter episodes. But I hope that if you take nothing from this episode, then you just take at least the inspiration to ask yourself where or when or how can I give more self more grace or if you really want to boil it down to just taking one thing away from this episode I hope that you can just put your hand on your heart and be like it's okay I'm allowed in whatever sort of situation that you're in you're allowed to feel however you're feeling and there is another side to it so maybe grace is what opens up you know a little door to get to the bigger door who knows but no matter what I hope this is a good reminder for maybe not where you are right now but maybe somewhere down the road thank you so much for hanging out with me in this episode and I'm looking forward to talking more chatting more with you and seeing what else comes up i'll catch you in the next episode i hope you enjoyed this episode of the show thank you so much for being here and sitting in this circle for our chat today if you feel called let me know how this impacted you by leaving a rating or a review and i'll see you next time